it's an amazing place. The type of research that's been done here is, I think, nobody else has done before, is um, very unique to this place. And for scientists, conservationists and researchers, I think it's very interesting to be here. It's a great opportunity. But she has fell in love. <laughs> <Oops>. <laughs> I'm here in Mozambique as 40 years in, in Zavre, where we started the Association of Coastal Conservation of Mozambique. And the one of our main projects is looking the manta population of Zavre. So each manta has individual marks on the belly. It's just like a digital. And we created a software where we can put these pictures. We share this data with the other organizations and then we can find out, for example, if the mantas that live here are the same mantas uh, living in Tofu. And we also estimate the size using parallel lasers uh, with a camera in the middle. So we can, in the computer, estimate exactly the size of the manta ray. of nudie branch that we had here was really amazing. So we have found about 230 species of sea slugs and from that 170 is nudie branch. There's lots of animals that we didn't even know that exist. Um, with the quadrat we just basically take a fixed frame that we deposit on, a, on the reef. If we find nudie branch we take notes on what species, the size, certain observations, for example, were they feeding, are they moving, are they mating. We also sometimes collect specimen when we're not sure. Maybe it's something that we've never seen before and then we take it to the lab. And then we take uh, uh, some pictures from dorsal side in the foot. Now that's fantastic. Yeah. I see, I can see what you're saying. Yeah, the right one for. And then with this, we're going to dissect them and they look in inside for difference between the group that we call the quadricolor complex. You have three phases, I think. The one that you don't find, nothing. The one that you think everything is a nudie bread. Yeah. And then the one that you start to find. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> lot of question marks when it comes to humpback whales. There's such big animals but there's so little known about them. The, our most busy month are August and September and it's really amazing we do land surveys where we sit on top of a dune where we have a good wide angle view of Zavra Bay and we look at abundance and surface behavior. and hoping to find someone who might want it to make his or her project to analyze all the data that we're collecting. We got a new wreck here that sank in March this year. We are not expecting that. <laughs> and that's 32 meters far from the reef on the center bank. And now has been colonized by different fishes. So we start to look uh, also how the wreck develop. And uh, it's quite amazing because we've yeah. seen difference from week to week. If you have a help from internals, for example, they're gonna do a quadrat or they're gonna do a video transect. Now we have a lot less fish. And what the locals start to do now is to use more nets to try to collect the same fish that before they used to do with the lines. And this is in Zavra, but the problems in the whole coast of Mozambique, and they are gill nets, they are not selective nets. 
basically everything that gets on the net die. We have participated in many presentations for government parts about manta rays, whale sharks, and explain the reasons why these animals are not just common fish. They have a low reproduction rate that if you start fish, they're going to disappear. And today, the marine life is the main reason why people come to Mozambique. So we're trying to approach a lot of different ways these problems. I think the main one is trophy education, but I think we can do a lot with the kids. It's going to take 30 years, but it's changing the little ones that you're going to see big changes in the future. Because Yao started talking about that big global problem with the big fisheries and there's obviously another problem that's also really universal, it's rubbish. It's a big whale, hopefully you can see he's smiling also. So we are not trying only to go to the beach and collect and then still have to burn it. We're trying to actually reuse that material with the kids, with a creative process. So Yara started building an amazing place where the intern's also going to be staying and her own house is here. It's built in a sustainable way. We use about 5,000 glass bottles that was just on the dunes. There was a big fishing net that we use on the roof, so the roof lasts longer. Then there's a solar geyser, so there's no electricity or anything needed to heat up water has a green roof on the toilet, which is really cool. And there are other people around this area that also is doing a great job, for example, in Dunas de Dovela. Dunas de Dovela is a small ecology. If we compare to Zavora, we are more interested in the conservation of the forest rather than the one of the ocean, which Yara is taking care of. They wanted to create something in a very close relationship with a local community. Uh, the story also uh, of the land is linked to the school of the village. First thing is to employ people from here, which means that they are not obliged to go to South Africa or to Maputo, so they can stay close to your family, which is a big thing for them. The majority of the food we have here comes from the village where we have helped some local farmers so that they can develop. I mean, I'm talking more about irrigation. So we try to find people who can do something and we try to push them to do a bit more so that we can help to spread. I'm trying to reconnect that to the community. So we have six horses that are used for tourism trail rides. Where we take the kids to the horses and um, teach them a little bit more about compassion, about the responsibility that we have if we keep animals. And they love to sit on the horses. <laughs> It's a really, it's a communal feeling, which is which is really nice, and I enjoy that. Change the values of the things, and you realize that you need much less than you might think that you need if you are in a town. And also the challenge, the African challenge. Yeah, especially with the conservation. But what I am, for example, very passionate about, it's constantly we're being challenged by all beliefs, by different value systems. You know, it's not only coming here and imposing ideas from what we learned at home, but it's to work with the people here and see how together we can make a difference. We are
are happy. Happy we are happy. Happy we are happy to be together.